Understanding the basics can actually be a game changer for your cybersecurity career. And these basics might even land you the job. Hi, I'm Venetia. Welcome back to my channel where I talk all about cybersecurity and how you can succeed as a woman in cybersecurity. In today's video, I really want to discuss some of the basics in cybersecurity, why these basics are important and why you shouldn't sort of rush over the basics and get to the more advanced information too quickly. When building out your cybersecurity career or planning to pivot into cybersecurity, whether you're working in another space, it can be so easy to get drowned by all of the information that's available out there for you to learn about cybersecurity. And so this is a massive field, it's a massive industry, and more so, it is evolving, it's dynamic, and you know, you have to keep continuously learning, otherwise, you're just not gonna progress and get further into the field. But with this, what is unfortunately the reality is that a lot of the times, a lot of us tend to skim over some of the components which we feel, you know, these are the basics and I want to get a little bit more advanced knowledge so that, you know, I could get that certification to get me the job. And that's all fine because at the moment, the barrier to entry, you know, varies a little bit. And unfortunately, a lot of the time there's a credential required or a certification required, etc. In my view, skills and knowledge about the basics is actually what is going to um, land you that job and what is going to enable you to execute on that job. But, you know, somehow, somewhere, we do. We, the, we need the degrees, it's important. We need certifications, it's important. It validates our knowledge and our skills. And so, um, you know, no, no, no hate on that side. But... There is just more to this than what we realize. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you're interested in knowing what these basics are, please stay tuned. Remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you find the information interesting and useful. All right. So the main thing that we want to talk about today is really a concept of don't rush it. Don't rush the basics. Don't skim over the basics because Understanding these basics and fundamental concepts can take you many places in your cybersecurity career. And it's really important that you get the foundation right, learn the core concepts, and then once you have the foundation and the core concepts and you really understand it, then moving to more advanced skills and certifications becomes actually much easier. And for you to have a cybersecurity conversation with a potential employer during an interview becomes much easier. So core concept here, don't rush, don't skim over the basics. So what are some of these basics? Firstly, I think it's very critical to understand that cybersecurity is not only about technology. Yes, it's about being able to identify the right technology control in, to implement in order to prevent cybercrime and attacks and risks from materializing against the business and execution of vulnerabilities, remediation of vulnerabilities, etc. But cybersecurity is more holistically about people, processes, and technology. So firstly, what is the business objective? And what's important to the business? What's the main risk to the business? So if they don't have protection against a certain critical asset, what will happen to that business? Will, will that business no longer function and will they go out of business? That's where you really understand the value of cybersecurity to that business is, you know, how the business is addressing the risk of what, what could happen to that asset versus the resilience of the business. Because you also can't implement 10 technology controls on one single system where you have people working on a system that's not really as computer or tech savvy. Then you're going to hamper and hinder the productivity of these people. 
So it's very important to sort of understand that from a cybersecurity perspective, you have to think of controls, controls to put in place, technology controls. You have to think of people controls in place and also how the controls that you are implementing impacts people and productivity. And you also have to think about what are some of these processes that you are putting in place that whether it is processes that your users need to follow, when they need to access corporate systems, uh, that then needs to be bolstered by a technical control to support that process, etc. So cybersecurity is all about people, process, and technology. That's the first component. The second component and a core fundamental concept that you really need to think about is the CIA triad. I cannot tell you in how many rooms I have been with junior uh, professionals that are trying to get an entry-level cybersecurity job, but they've never heard of the CIA triad. And the CIA triad is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality addresses the fact that information should not be accessed by unauthorized parties. Integrity addresses the fact that information should not be modified by unauthorized parties and availability really addresses the fact that the systems are available, they have not been uh, compromised in any other way or the data is available whenever uh, and wherever required. So the CIA triad is another critical component that you need to know and you need to know what the CIA, like interpret it for yourself and understand it for yourself so that you are able to talk about this when you go into an interview. The next really important thing that I want to say is you need to know about networking. Now, networking is sort of an iffy topic, right? Because a lot of the times, and we you you have a lot of cybersecurity professionals in the industry that don't necessarily work on the networking side at all or on the network security side at all. Um, they might be in the software development side, um, you know, they might be risk or data professionals, etc. But in my view, what is really critical is for you to be able to understand how the internet works, how traffic flows, how things communicate together, how data can be accessed on a certain system over the internet if that system is compromised, what exfiltration of data means over certain connections, etc. And so that's why I think that Every person that wants to get into cybersecurity should really understand the fundamentals of networking and how networking works and how traffic flows over the internet. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to go and learn the advanced things. You don't even have to build or implement a network. But go through the, the Aussie model, the OSI model. There's like from layer one to layer seven in the stack and go through each of those later layers, whether it is the data layer, the transport layer, the application layer at layer seven, go through each of those layers, understand what happens at each of those layers. Because if you understand what happens at the layers, then you can understand how, firstly, where certain controls fit in to provide that level of protection. And secondly, where things happen, what cyber criminals are exploiting. So if people are now talking about they're doing ARP poisoning, you know at which layer that is. If people are talking about that there's a denial of service attack or it's an application-based attack, then you know they're talking about perhaps a layer seven attack that's happening. And so you really want to know things like the, the Aussie model, you want to know what TCP IP means, you know, no protocols and ports. What are the common ports? Uh, remote desktop, port 3389. You want to know what, for example, um, the port of SSH is because SSH is often used to securely access systems. So that would be port 22, for example. So you have to know what some of these basics are in, in order to really understand how traffic flows, how information is accessed and when, what the risk would be. If you allow, for example, RDP out to the internet, which is port 3389 to the internet, that's a problem, right? You don't want to do that. Um, so 
the way you'll know that, and even if you're an auditor, the way you'll know that something is bad is by understanding it. So if you're auditing a certain network or a certain firewall and you can see that one IP address has access out to the internet on port 80 or uh, RDP 3389, then you can flag that and you know that that is bad. So that's the networking component. The next component is get a basic understanding of systems and operating systems. What are the different operating systems? How do systems work? How are systems configured? Know that there's different processes that can be enabled and disabled. For example, the FTP service should not be enabled on a system because then essentially you're allowing for FTP connections into that system. And if you don't know what FTP is, FTP is an insecure file transfer protocol. It is not encrypted. It, it transfers data in plain text. So what you want to do is use, for example, something like SFTP if you really must. Um, but what you ideally want to do is obviously allow traffic to flow via something like a firewall or something like a secure gateway that has different layers of protection in and not necessarily ever directly to a system. Then when you're looking into understanding systems, it will also give you the understanding of why systems need to be patched. And that's so important because again, if someone asks you in an interview, why do we do patching? And you say, because I have to do patching or because it's part of a process or something like that. That's not really a great answer for a cyber security professional to give because why you do patching is because you want to minimize the vulnerability on certain systems so that the systems cannot be exploited by uh, different exploits or by different bot type of attacks or different cybercrime attacks. And that's why you remediate systems and patch them because you want to fix vulnerabilities so that the system is secure. And patch management, again, is almost like it's been inherently done by system administrators, but it is really a critical component of security. And patch management and vulnerability management goes with a whole different things. It goes with open ports, unused applications, unused services. And so you really wanna know what this is how patch management works and why it's important to patch different systems. All right, so in summary, what we talked about here is knowing the basics, the CIA triad, networking, system components, and how you secure systems, and what the weight of cybersecurity actually means to a business, what it means to do patch management, vulnerability management, and then the final note that I'd like to leave you with is that when you're getting into an interview, a lot of the times, especially if it's a junior level interview um, or even for some of the more senior level interviews, the questions really pertain around the basics. And an employer wants to validate that you actually know cybersecurity and you actually can speak, you know, the cybersecurity language etc. And so that's what's important. Knowing the basics is really important. Yes, you need to build your skills. Yes, you need to have advanced skills. Yes, you need to know how to do certain things, whether it is configuring a firewall, implementing network controls, endpoint controls, etc. Wherever you are in the world of cybersecurity, you need to know those things. But knowing the basics is really, really important. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a like, comment below and subscribe to my channel. Catch you next time.